Suppose we have a vector y that lives inside of our vector space fn for some field f, and we have a subspace w uh, inside of fn, and then consider the orthogonal basis u1, u2 up to ur right here. Again, this is orthogonal basis for w. Then we say that the orthogonal projection of y onto w is given by the following. So we'll call this proj w of y, so pr o j short for projection there so we're projecting the vector y onto the subspace of w here now proj w of y is somewhat of a mouthful so when the subspace w is clear from context we'll just abbreviate this as y hat and so the definition of y hat is going to be we're going to take the linear combination of the vectors what u1 up to u r right so we take the basis for w we're going to take a combination a linear combination of these vectors so this will belong to w that's important to realize there and then the coefficients are going to be the foyer coefficients so ui dot y over ui dot ui so those are going to be those foyer coefficients right there in which case then if you write that in more compact form we would take the sum where i ranges from one to r and we take the combination, we take all of the basis elements with the corresponding Fourier coefficients. Okay, and so let me give you, and so this is called the orthogonal projection onto the subspace. Now, in the very special case where W is just the span of a single non-zero vector, this would give you a one-dimensional subspace. So we can talk about the projection of a vector onto a line. And so oftentimes in that situation, we'll call it proj u of y as opposed to proj of w. And so you can do this. You can put like a spanning set for your space right down there. And so if it's just a single vector, we'll talk about the projection of a vector onto another vector. And this is a common occurrence here. And intuitively, the idea is the following. You have some vector y right here, u, excuse me. And then you have your other vector y, in which case then y cast a shadow on the direction of u and the orthogonal projection is going to be that shadow it's the vector that goes in the direction of u that's the shadow cast here and the reason why i call it orthogonal projection we'll see very shortly that the angles between these vectors here is in fact a right angle so let's see a quick example of this let's take y to be 173 and u to be the vector 211 so let's compute the orthogonal projection of y onto the vector u, or we'll call it y hat for short. So the formula, since there's just a single vector here, the formula is we take the Fourier coefficient u dot y over u dot u and times it by u. So the projection of y onto u will be a scalar multiple of u. It will be in the same direction that u is. So that sounds like horrible grammar, but let, let's go on anyways. So doing this calculation, we have to do u dot y. So we get 2 plus 7 plus 3. And for the denominator, we're going to do u dot u, which is going to be 4 plus 1 plus 1, times that by u, which is 2, 1, 1, like so. Uh, simplifying here, 2 plus 7 plus 3 is a 12, 4 plus 1 plus 1 is a 6, and then we times that by 2, 1, 1, like so. Well, 12 goes into, uh, 6 goes into 12 two times, so we get 2 times 1, 1, or we get 2 times 2, 1, 1. And so the orthogonal projection, y hat, is going to look like the vector 4, 2, and 2. And so this gives us the projection of the vector right there. So again, drawing our picture, it's like we have our vector y right here. We had our vector u, a little bit shorter, like this. We had u. And then y hat would be this vector that's twice as long. So this is our y hat, which turned out to be two times u. What about this vector right here? I claim this is a right triangle after all. So what would this other vector be? Uh, so if I draw it so that the arrowhead is pointing up, this should be the vector y minus y hat. So let's quickly compute what that's going to look like. Uh, y is off the screen right now, but if we take y minus y hat, y, remember, was 1, 7, 3. And then we're going to subtract from the vector we just found, which would be 4, 2, and 2. So this ends up giving us negative 3, 5, and 1. So let's consider this vector for a moment. It's very clear to see that if I take, if I take this, uh, if I take y hat and I add to it y minus y hat, right? Clearly, this is going to add up back to y, right? So you take your 4, 2, 2 
plus negative 3, 5, 1. Again, that goes back to 1, 7, 3. That should be no surprise here, right? Because, I mean, that's after all how we computed y minus y hat. We, we subtracted, so, so if you put it back, the inverse operations in play here. But look at these two vectors. If I take y hat and I take the dot product with this y minus y hat, this is where it gets interesting. You're going to get negative 3, 5, 1 dot the other vector. Oh, I wrote that. I wrote in the wrong order. Again, this doesn't make much of a difference for real vectors, but with complex vectors, you should be much more careful. So I do want to make sure I put this in the right order. 4, 2, 2 dot negative 3, 5, 1. And I should also mention that for complex vectors, uh, even if you switch the order around, if they were orthogonal, you'll get zero in both situations. So the dot prior, we get a negative 12 plus 2 times 5, which is a 10, plus 2 times 1, which is a 2. So we do, in fact, see we get a zero right here. So what this tells us is that if w is equal to the span of this vector u, then clearly our vector y hat was inside of w. I mean, remember, we noticed that y hat was just 2 times u. That's pretty clear. But, but to, to, to add to that, we see the following y minus y hat, this vector negative 3, 5, and 1, this belongs to the orthogonal complement of w because this vector was, in fact, it was orthogonal to y hat, which also implies it will be orthogonal to u. So when we found this orthogonal projection, this actually verifies the picture we had in mind right here that these two vectors, y hat and y, y, y minus y hat, are perpendicular to each other because their dot product turned out to be 0. It turns out that this principle is is generally true. I mean, this is true all the time. If we have some vector y inside of a inside of vector space Fn, and you take any subspace W of Fn, then the orthogonal complement of y onto w, if you subtract it from the original vector y, this will always produce something in the orthogonal complement. In particular, the orthogonal projection of y is orthogonal to the difference of y with its orthogonal, uh, orthogonal projection. These two vectors will always be perpendicular with each other.